Listening to God's Word is an essential tool for your spiritual growth. We bring to you the simple but highly anointed message that guarantees absolute liberation from all oppressions of the devil and powerful impartation for all round lifting in life. Take a leap into a divine encounter as the anointed man of God takes you into an adventure of a lifetime. God bless you as you listen. Whatever need to be put to an end today shall come to an end in your life. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural is my new realm in redemption. That is the theme of the month of June 2018 in the winner's family worldwide. And today is our special monthly anointing service. Also double as our enough is enough service. Whatever came in here with you that is not glorified God must be destroyed by the anointing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This morning, we are face to face with the spirit of the living God. And inside the anointing, the only thing we have thereof is the spirit of the living God. There are many gods, but there is who we call the almighty God. And the simplest way by which you can convey the spirit of the living God into your own life is through the anointing. That is why in our commission, every third Sunday of the month, we receive the anointing. And I'm glad to announce to you this morning that the anointing oil, as far as the nation Nigeria is concerned, is given to our father in the faith, Bishop David Oyedepo. Give Jesus a big clap offering. Amen. Amen. So we know the secret behind it. We know how it come from. We know how it was generated from the Bible. And we know what it can do. There is nothing that is doing you, permit my grammar, that the anointing oil cannot cater for. We have seen someone that the womb was completely removed. But the anointing oil bring back fresh womb. Somebody once said to me that the doctor told her that her womb is being torn inward out. That she can never conceive. And I told her, go and be taking the anointing as your dose. And she was taking it. And miraculously she conceived. And she delivered. After she delivered... I told her again, go for another te- check. And when she went for another check, the whoop is still turning inward out. So the question I asked was, where did the baby stay for nine months? When God is talking, let men go and sleep. Whatever cannot stop God, cannot stop the anointing. You know what? Inside the anointing, it is the spirit of God. And anywhere the spirit of God is, there must be liberty. Therefore, at your return from this service today, every form of bondage shall be off your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Very important this morning, nothing delivers a man like the knowledge of God's word. You shall know the truth. And the truth you know shall make you free. Nothing makes free like the knowledge of the word of God. Nothing delivers like the word. As many that came to Jesus to hear, they were made whole. As many that hear him were made whole. Nothing set people free like the knowledge of the word of God. And not just knowledge, applied knowledge. Applied knowledge. Applied knowledge is what sets people free any day, 
anytime. Until you know it and apply it, you can never free from that bondage. Please understand this this morning. There was a story in the book of Zechariah chapter 3, verses 1 down to 4. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. You see, Satan has no respect for title. Either you are high priest or you are a pastor. If you don't know what to do and you are doing, not doing it, he doesn't have respect for you. The only thing Satan respects is your spiritual weight. What you carry is what Satan respects. He showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan also standing at his right hand. Satan was standing at the right hand of a man of God, the high priest, to do what? To resist him. To resist his oppression. And look at what happened in verse 2. And the Lord said unto, unto Satan, The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that have chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. Is not this a brand Plug out of fire. Joshua never knew that before that he was plugged out of fire. You can't touch fire and go scot free. The reason why Satan has been touching majority of believers is because they don't know what they carry. If you don't know what you carry, you can miscarry it. Please understand that everyone born of God and born of the spirit, they are not ordinary men and women. You are no more permitted to live a natural life. And that is why from the beginning of the month we have been observing a topic caption, engaging the supernatural power of love for your liberty. That is what we are engaging this morning. We are engaging the supernatural power of love for our liberation, for our liberty. The Lord rebuked Satan. The Lord said unto Satan, don't you know that this Joshua is being plugged out of fire? And in verse 3, now Joshua was clothed with a VD garment and stood before the angel. Every cloth that is not your own that enemy have put on your neck shall cut fire this morning. They will catch fire this morning. And he answered and spoke unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the vidy garment from him. That is what we have come to do. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thy iniquity to pass away, I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. That is what somebody is going back on with. Someone is going back on with a change of raiment today. You are returning back on with a change of name today. You are returning back on with a change of name today. You are returning back on with a change of level today. Because enough is enough. Enough is enough. In my own family, I stopped some nonsense. At a particular age, they are expecting you to be buried. This young boy stopped that nonsense. I place enough is enough on it because I got to know what it takes to be free. Praise in the name of Jesus. It is one thing to know it and another thing to do it. Knowing it is not enough, you must step, take a step further to do what you have known to, in order to apply and to experience your liberty. Say with me, enough is enough. Say it angrily. Enough is enough. enough, enough. Let me say this to you. That suffering beyond a why. Suffering beyond a moment. Suffering beyond a night. Is contrary to your right in redemption. When you keep suffering for years. That is no more ordinary. Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2. Suffering beyond a why. Suffering beyond a moment, suffering beyond a night is contrary to God in redemption. Every issue of long continence is an affliction of the devil. It's an affliction of the devil. 
God is committed to say to us, after we have suffered but a while, weeping is only permitted for a night, but in the morning, joy must come. Whatever have kept you waiting on the same spot, living a pitiable life, an end has come today in the name of Jesus Christ. According to God's word, any affliction or challenges of long continuance is the manifestation of the cause of the law. Deuteronomy 28, verse 59. Whatever you are suffering for long, you have prayed, you have fasted, no answer. It is no more ordinary, but a cause. Then the Lord will make thy plague wonderful. Say with me, God forbid. And the plague of thy seed, the thing I have translated to the generation, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sickness, uh, sicknesses, and of long continuance. Once it is no more ordinary, it's going beyond a week, two weeks, one month, two months, one year. It is no more ordinary, but a cause, a manifestation. Whatever cause that came in here with you, none of them will escape the power of the anointing. In the name of Jesus Christ. The question this morning is, what does it take for me to experience true liberty? Jesus said, if you know this thing and you do them, happy are ye. What is it take? What does it take for me to experience total liberty? Total liberty, very important. Number one demand for any man, no matter your status, either you are born again or you are not born again, this is the number one demand. Number one demand to express true liberty is what I call aggression. Say with me, aggression. Aggression is a spiritual violence to deliver yourself from the hand of the enemy. I may not know the true meaning of redemption, but in a family meeting, they asked me, what do you have to say? And I stood up. What I told them was different from what, what they were discussing. I said to them, in case you are killing everybody in this family, let it be known to you as if I was fighting with somebody. Let it be known to you that you cannot kill me. And I carried my bag and entered the vehicle back to the city. Amen. My mother said, ah, this boy has finished me. This boy has created a problem for me. I am the first graduate in my family that lives and is still living today. Amen. Aggression is a spiritual violence. It takes aggression to experience progression. Only the aggressive believer can become progressive. Without aggression, never experience liberty. Jesus said from his mouth in Matthew chapter 11 verse 12, Jesus was speaking. He said, the kingdom of God sovereign violence and only the violent take it by force. Only the violent, the one violent talked about being aggressive. Many people are too gentle. That is where their destiny could not be settled. Amen. They are too gentle. Jesus sent us as a dove. And as they were going, he said, come back here. Your life is not secure going as a dove. I'm also sending you as a serpent. Balance gospel. If anybody messed up, just bite him and continue your journey. Amen. If you are complete 100% gentle believer, they will do purpose with your life. I can bet you. That is the reason why majority of believers have never been free. They kill their father, kill their mother, kill the elder one, and the thing is coming to, to him also or to her, and he said, please don't kill me. No, you don't need to beg them. You have to take your stand. Say, no, enough is enough. At a particular age in my family, their tummy will just be swelling, particularly at the age 40. The thing will be budging out, budging out. The next thing is to the hospital. From there, they run here and there. They will bring the corpse of the man. 
I stop that nonsense. Whatever be killing them in your family, an end has come today in the name of Jesus Christ. An end has come today in the name of Jesus. Be aggressive. The scripture tells us to be angry, but we must not sin. So anger is spiritual. Anger is scriptural. I am not talking about anger between husband and wife. Spiritual anger is scriptural. You say something that's supposed not to be, you say, no, this thing must stop. This thing must stop. We had that testimony. He said, I was three days old when I had a head problem. While the doctor was trying to rescue me, air entered into my lungs, which affected my rib. For 31 years, I've been covered from January to December and from Monday to Sunday. He said, last Sunday, I came in here and I told God that this embarrassment in my life was, was enough. Everybody that stayed around me knew that I was coughing. He said, last Sunday, I danced. I told God that I needed a birthday present because that was my birthday. That was how God healed me of 31 years of cough. Until you become aggressive, you'll never be free. So aggression is the number one requirement to be free from the hand of Satan. When they were about to possess their possession, they sent some spies to go and check the place. And when they got there, they said, people there, they are like giants. We are like art before them. We cannot take over the city. But here is Caleb and, jo and Joshua. They steal them. Number 13, 30. Number chapter 13, verse 30. They steal the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess the land. For we are well able. For we are well able. Let us arise and go at once. But we are well able. For they are food for us. Hear me now. There are many things that God has given to you, but Satan won't allow them to get to you except you are violent. If you are not violent, Satan will be taking what belongs to you and be every free day in your life. And you'll be waiting and wasting, thinking that that is God's plan for your life. God never do evil. Every good and perfect gift coming from the Lord in whom there is no forever nor shadow of turning. Every evil you have been experiencing in your family. Enough is enough today in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 24. The word of God says, rise up. Take your journey. Pass over the river Anom. Behold, I have given into thy hand Sion, Hamorite, king of Esbon. I have given, their, I've given you their land. But begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. Life is not from fear. Life is warfare. You are either fighting the battle or someone is fighting on your behalf. Hallelujah. You are either fighting the battle or someone somewhere that you don't know is fighting on your behalf. If not for the prayer of the brethren, many who have been a forgotten issue. If not because somebody is praying for you, many could have been a forgotten issue. Life is not from fear. Life is warfare. You are either fighting the battle yourself or someone is fighting for you. Please be aggressive. Be aggressive. Stop being a complete gentle believer. If not, they will begin to toy with your destiny. Stop being cold. You might be gentle physically, but in the spirit, don't be gentle. In the spirit, there is reason for spiritual arrogancy against the kingdom of hell. They say, what is your name? Where do you come from? He said, I'm a family of Oyede, but you had a testimony. He said, this one is mad. It cannot be useful for what we want to use them for. Let him stay aside. You and God, he said, we belong to the same family. Okay, you two come and stay there. You to come and stay there. They were talking with authority. Please begin to talk with authority because you are children of God. You are not just ordinary person. The drama unit have paid, you know, painted the picture for us this morning that we are supernatural. And that's who you are. Number two way by which you can experience total liberty 
is your love for God. Very important. Your love for God. You can engage the love of God to get your liberty. It was the love of God in Daniel that gave him liberty from the lion's mouth. The lions couldn't tamper with his life. The lion couldn't touch his destiny. It was the love of God in the life of Sedrach, Mesa, and Abednego that quenches the furnace of fire for them. The love of God. We are not going to bow down, Daniel 317, for our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. And in case you will not, we are not going to bow down. The love of God won't allow them to bow down for any graven image. How do you prove your love for God? Is by loving what he loves. By loving what he loves. What is that thing that God loves? God loves souls. He doesn't want anyone to come to destruction. God loves souls. He doesn't want anyone to be lost. God loves souls. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world and he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When we are committed to pursuing the lost soul to the point of establishment, we are brought into the realm of supernatural. We had a testimony this morning. Miracle job, miracle breakthrough via winning of souls. Via kingdom advancement endeavor. Somebody once shared a testimony said, without Matthew 6, life is meaningless. The earlier we embrace this truth, the earlier, the earlier we embrace the truth of Matthew 6, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. John 15, 15 to 16. Hear what Jesus said. Henceforth, I call you not servant, for the servant knoweth not what the lost doeth, but I call you friends, for all the things that I have heard of my father have made them known unto you. You have not chosen me, verse 16, but I have chosen you and have ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, and that whatsoever you can now ask of my father in my name, I will give it to you. That is what we enjoy by loving what God loves. One sheep got lost. Jesus told us the parable. And the shepherd left the 99 in search of just one. One must not be lost. So if we love what God loves, we enjoy liberty. Jesus asked them question. In Luke chapter 22, verse 35. Luke twenty two thirty five. 35. When I send you without pause or script, and shoe, do you lack anything? And the disciple answer, they said, we lack nothing. A man that loves what God loves can never beg. A man that loves what God loves can never lack anything. Psalm 34 and first 10. The young lion do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the law shall not lack any good thing. Please love what God loves. Our love for God brings us into the realm of the supernatural. So as we engage our heart in pursuit of the kingdom expansion and endeavor, God continue to change our status supernaturally. Supernaturally. Number three, what does it take to experience liberty? Very important. Entered into a covenant to serve God. You want to be free. You don't want to suffer what your generation have been suffering from. Enter a covenant to serve God. Enter into a covenant to serve your God. A covenant to serve God put an end to crisis of life. It put an end to intimidation of life. It put an end to frustration of life. All oh, this one leg in one leg out can't save you from your problems. Enter a covenant. Enter an oath to serve the Lord. In Second Chronicles chapter 15, 
verses 12 to 15, they enter into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart, with all their soul, and that whosoever will not seek the God of their fathers should be put to death, either small or great. And in verse 15, the Lord gave them rest round about. The Lord gave them rest round about. If you want rest round about, enter a covenant to seek the Lord. Somebody say, my work won't allow me. Who owns the work and you? It's because of my tight schedule. It's because you have your life. If the giver of life take you, you know that you don't have any tight schedule. Serve God. Job 36 verse 11. If they will obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Serving God makes you more than conqueror. It makes you more than conqueror. Serving God put an end to the pressures of life. It put an end to the pressure of life. You are free to make your choice either to keep experiencing pressure of life or pleasures of life. It's your choice. Entry into a covenant to serve God puts you in enjoyment forever. Please understand me. Outside of serving God, man has no other primary reason for, it, for living. When an object is no more useful in your house, what do you do? You throw it away. The same way, when a man is no more useful in the hand of God, be writing your way, you will soon die. I can bet you. David said, I shall live. I shall not die. On what ground? To declare the words of the Lord. Don't allow your job to deceive you. Sunday, Sunday believer in this generation has no future. Sunday, Sunday believer in this generation has no future. Show me a man that is serving God. Then you have seen a man that will escape the challenges of life. They might be touching others, but they are not permitted to touch him. Even though challenges of life come, he will overcome and God will restore him back in double. That was the testimony of a man called Job. Job said, even though he slay me, I will still trust him. Serving God entitles you to the continuous flow of God's blessing. You will serve the Lord. He will bless your bread. You will serve the Lord. Exodus 23, 25 to 26, you will serve the Lord and he will bless your bread. He will take away sickness from the midst of thee. He said, the number of your day, God will fulfill when you serve the Lord, when you serve the Lord, you will not cast away your young. There shall be nothing barren and handy. Even your land shall be fruitful. The number of your days, God himself will see to it that you fulfill it. By doing what? By serving the Lord. By serving the Lord. If they will obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Number four, what does it take? To have total liberty. This is very important. Repentance, redemption, or call it salvation. Repentance, I mean genuine repentance. Why they are killing people in my family? And one of our younger brothers came and said, Brother, what did you do? I said, ah, I gave my life to Christ. I genuinely repented of my sin. I accept Jesus as, your, as my Lord and Savior. Uh, you are lucky. You are lucky. He was in 400 level when they do chicken with his life. They brought his call back home. There is nothing like luck in this kingdom. You do something to get something. You do something to get something. Repentance is a must for those who want to place enough is enough for the place in their life. All these Taiwans born again need to be dropped. All these non-original born again need to be dropped. If you want to serve God, you want to be born again, be genuinely born again. If you want to be saved, be 
genuinely say without our savior life has no future what gives you a future of tomorrow is your salvation salvation means embracing the savior embracing the savior prodigal son suffer for long but one day said enough is enough enough is enough when he talked to himself and thought within himself and he obeyed the voice of his father he returned back home look gospel chapter 15 verse 17 to 20 and when he came to himself many of us need to come back to ourselves this morning when he came after he had so far for long he came to himself and said how many higher servants of my father have bread enough and to spare and i perish here with hunger i perish here with hunger your father cannot hold all things hold the whole world and you are begging and living from hand to mouth can you see a, someone that his father owed a conglomerate companies group of company and is searching for job never redemption places you on the platform of living a supernatural life a life that even go beyond your understanding look at verse 18 i will arise and go to my father look 15 18 and i will say to my father i've sinned against thee the and before thee and i am no more worthy to become my, thy son make me as one of thy higher servant when he was going he said give me but when he returned he said make me those who come to god to collect doesn't have a future it is only those who come to be made he said make me as one of your higher servants and he arose and came to his father but when his father was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. He was welcome back home. Without a savior, you have no future. Destiny does not answer to luck. It answers to light. You can't be living in sin and say the grace will abound. Romans 6, 1 and 2. He said, God forbid you can't be living in sin and expect god to put an end to the plague in your family it's not possible it's not possible when the lord will have healed israel Hosea chapter 7 verse 1 the iniquity of ephraim was discovered living in sin makes you sink down in life so the new repentance is a must what else must I do to be free from challenge of life? To have liberty from challenges of life? To say enough is enough to the problem of life? Very important. Embrace the spirit of God. Embrace. Allow the spirit of God. Allow him into your life. Allow him into your spirit. And the simplest way by which we can allow the spirit of God into our life is via the anointing oil which we are receiving today. And I know that by today's anointing whatever won't let you go must go for you today in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Failure at the edge of success that is not God's plan. You try and try and try a battle eat teeth something just happened and scattered the whole thing. And you started again, running from pillar to post. God asked me to tell you, enough is enough. Yokes of no helper. You are the only one doing it. There are many under the sound of my voice. From January to now, nobody has ever given them anything as a gift. They labor to get everything. They are under the bondage of no helper. At the point where people will help them, they throw their application and everything aside. Say no. No, something just tell them, don't have this one. Enough is enough. Apply here and there, dropping your application. They say they will get back to you, but they never get back to you. Enough is enough. When the anointing comes upon your head, it provokes the release of favor. Your favor is going straight into the heart of men and women, and they return back to grant you favor. That will be somebody's testimony this morning in Jesus' name. Sickness and disease in our body. 
enough is enough sharp pain here and there you are less than 30 you are less than 40 you have become customer in the hand of the doctor enough is enough there is nothing you are looking for that the oil cannot give to you why inside the oil is the personality of the holy spirit please get me right this morning inside the anointing oil is the personality of the holy spirit and what is holy spirit the holy spirit is power the holy spirit is power the holy spirit is power and where the spirit of god is anywhere the spirit of god is there must be liberty how do i have liberty from the challenges of life by the spirit of god there is a spirit that raised jesus from the dead jesus truly really died and he was dead for three days he was in the grave all hope was gone but one spirit went in and rested upon him and jesus came out from the grave romans 8 11. if that same spirit that raised jesus from the dead romans 8 11, dwells in you if that same spirit capital letter s spirit talking about the spirit of god if that same spirit dwells in you the same spirit shall quicken your mortal bodies it will quicken your mortal body by a spirit that dwelleth in you this anointing this morning we put an end to every suffering of your life in the name of jesus christ what is in the anointing oil number one the yoke destroying power of god is there is there any yoke you have brought here this morning what will destroy it is right in this on this altar the yoke destroying power of god is right inside the oil isaiah 10 27 and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing it shall come to pass which is this day that your body shall be taken away from your off your shoulder and its yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing because of the anointing the one anointing means christ and christ is the self-anointed one so every time you touch the oil straight to your head you are invoking the spirit of god you are invoking the spirit of touch not they might be touching everyone in the family but upon them that have the mark you are becoming untouchable revelation 9 4 upon them that have the mark touch not it was a command so every time you are not your head you are placing the zeal of god upon your life the zeal of touch not touch not my anointed do my prophet no harm he seeking knife as four to five go through the city destroy them utterly both young and old but come not near those that have the seal of god upon their head come not near come not near don't come near them those that have the seal of god upon their head don't come near them that is what the word says so every time you are anointed the spirit of god that destroys yokes comes upon your life what is in the anointing the healing power of god is anyone sick among you let him call for the elders of the church james 5 14 to 15 and let them pray over him anointing him with oil James 5, 14 to 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. He will change level from where he used to be. And if he has committed anything, he shall be forgiven. That is the healing power of God in the hall. The healing power of God resides in the hall. If that same spirit, the angel from the dead, dwells in you, that simply will change your story forever. What is in the oil? Number three, the liberation power of God. Now the hour has come to liberate the world from all oppression of the wickedness through the preaching of the word of faith. Every time the world goes forth 
and the word of faith back it up, miracle becomes so cheap. The liberation power of God, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me, Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 3, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel and the good tidings to the meek, he has sent me to bind the broken hearted and to proclaim liberty to the captive. So every captive under the sound of my voice, today is your day of liberty. Today is your day of liberty. Today shall be your day of liberty. In the mighty name of Jesus. What is in the oil? As I round up quickly, number four, the oil carries the mystery of fan and the fire. Fan and the fire. Jesus said, in the book of Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 to 12, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance from the mouth of John, but he that come after me is mightier than I. Who shoe I am not worthy to be here. He shall baptize you with Holy Ghost and with fire. How will he do it? Whose fan is in his hand? He will totally purge his floor and gather his wheat into Ghana. But he will burn up chaff with unconscionable fire. So the anointing have the power to burn, not to burn everything that is not of God in your life. The woman said testimony in the month of April here, how she was taking anointing in the morning and in the evening. Even though doctor said she cannot conceive, she conceived miraculously. Anointing oil was a dose, and she was taking it morning and evening. There is no miracle you desire that the oil cannot give. There is no miracle you desire that the oil, which is the anointing oil, cannot give. We enter a supermarket one day and the accountant that went there together in that station said, we want to buy anointing oil. I said, shut up! They don't have it here. They don't have anointing oil here. They only have ordinary oil. So when you buy it in the market, don't just begin to anoint, your, anoint yourself. I say, I'm anointing myself. No, no. Never can still crack your brain and press your neck. But every time you buy it from the shop or from the chef and the anointed one bless it and pronounce it as only anointing oil. The power of God enters into it. Into it. A woman was captured with a daughter at her back and she poured the oil on the ground and literal fire came up. This is the power of God. This is touch not power. Therefore, whatever has been tampering with your destiny before now, by this anointing today, enough is enough in the name of Jesus. Whatever has been ravaging your destiny, you have been struggling from January to now, there is nothing to show. I decree by the authority in the name of Jesus, enough is enough in the name of Jesus. Every challenge in your body, in your place of work, in your career. They came, but you don't even know how they came. Hear what the word of God says. The Bible says, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. By this anointing this morning, whatever be destroying the work of your hands shall be destroyed completely in Jesus' name. <laughs> Somebody had an hospital in Lagos and she was, sent, she was told, because people used to die in that hospital, and she was told that if another person died there by Lagos State Government, we will close that hospital. She was not on duty when she was called that somebody died again. She grabbed the bottle of the oil, went straight like a mad woman, opened the mouth of the dead body, and poured the oil, complete bottle. Poured the oil. And the person that had been died for about 45 years, she, 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 came back to life. Whatever had been caught dead around your life, this morning anointing, we bring them back to life in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever enemy has stolen in your life, by this anointing, they are coming out in the name of Jesus. Whatever anyone has taken by violence from you, the power of God is getting them back for you in the name of Jesus. With God, all things are possible. With God. 
In the world, they have power, but here, there is also power in God. And one power is superior to another power. I decree that by today's anointing, whatever has been born in you shall be consumed by this anointing today. Yeah. We are born in fire and we have consuming fire. We are born in problem, but we have the consumer of problem. The anointing has the power to consume any problem that came in here with you. Please and please understand this. This is given to this commission. And I stand upon the show of my father in the faith and I decree everyone that is going to be anointed today, that plague that came in with you, they are not returning back all with you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Say with me, enough is enough. enough. To problem in your life, enough. to challenges in your life, enough. to sickness in your body, enough. to marital delay, to disappointment in job, to joblessness, to sickness and disease. Shout enough is enough. Stand to your feet. Enough is enough. Begin to declare that. Enough is enough to every predicament. Enough is enough to every problem. Your mouth is given to you to declare your liberty. Go ahead right now and pronounce. Enough is enough. To the challenge of life, enough is enough. To the problem in my family, enough is enough. By the power of God, enough is enough. Whatever I've been suffering before now, I decree enough is enough this morning. No more, no more, no more barrier. Whatever I've come to cause in my life, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. This morning, my liberty must be established. This morning, my liberty must be established. This morning, I am returning back home free. By the power of God, I am returning back home free. Enough is enough. Whatever anyone has taken from my life, today, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Whatever you have been suffering for long, an end has come today in the name of Jesus Christ. Weeping is only permitted for a night, but joy must come in the morning. Whatever you have suffered from the beginning of the year till now, no one of them is returning back home with you. Hear this testimony, 45 years wound, healed. 45 years ago when I was in primary school, I had a wound on my leg while I was playing football. Since then, I have been to several hospitals and places looking for solution to this wound, but there was none. During the last anointing service, I pulled off my shoe and I placed my leg on the floor of the sanctuary. As the servant of God was praying, he said, that the anointing will work for everybody and wipe away every sickness in our body. I believe it. I rub the anointing on that part of my leg and I check again. I notice that the wound of 45 years has, has gone. <laughs> Blessed is it that believe it. For there shall be performance of those things that the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Whatever you have been suffering for the past 45 years, I command them to be consumed by this fire. In the name of Jesus. That is not ordinary wound. 45 years. That is not ordinary wound. Stretch forth your hand here. Whatever you have been suffering before this time, that has brought, that have brought Shame and reproach to your person and to your family. I command an end today in the name of Jesus. By this anointing, your liberty is hereby established. In the name of Jesus. Don't forget repentance is one of the capital requirements to experience true liberty. Until you are born again, you can never be free again. 
Anointing can turn to annoyance in your life except you give your life to Jesus. Without the Savior, I have said you have no future. Satan has been playing game with your life for long. Won't you allow Jesus to help you this morning? Won't you allow him to put smart laughter in your mouth? You have been weeping, you have been crying. Jesus is saying, come unto me. I want to give you rest. There are quite a number of people amongst us this morning who need to surrender their life to Jesus. Who need the hand of God upon their life. On head bow in honor of Jesus. There are people who need to surrender their life to the master. There are people who need to hand over the sharing of their life to Jesus. There are people who have been suffering even since the beginning of their life. Nothing good has ever come out. Jesus is saying to you this morning, come, let me help you. Come, let me help you. Don't ignore his voice if you hear him this morning. Don't ignore his voice if you hear him this morning. I want to quickly pray with you wherever you might be. Wherever you might be standing this morning, I want to quickly pray, pray with you. All head bow in honor of Jesus. You belong to that group. Please, in your standing position where you are, just raise your right hand to Jesus. Raise your right hand to Jesus. I want to quickly pray with you from this altar. If you have raised your hands to Jesus, please repeat this prayer after me. That problem must come to an end in your life. Just raise up your right hand to Jesus. And if you have done that, repeat this prayer after me. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. Forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. I confess that you died for me. On the third day, you rose again for my justification. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Now I know I am born again. My name is written in the book of life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. My challenge, my problem, my affliction comes to an end today. In Jesus' name.